that should be okay. Go ahead and start again back here soon. Share this real quick. Hopefully, there's not a bunch of background noise. For a lot of you that don't know, I just got done <clears throat> going to a practice with my daughter and <clears throat> ended up running around for about a good hour. <clears throat> the cold was getting to me, my throat. So, I apologize for all the <coughs> coughing that might come through. we're moving on to animations and tweens so now we'll actually give our character some life <clears throat> instead of just having you know static images walking around <clears throat> so using left and right so right now it's using these two frames for standing still but when we start moving to the right now we're using these four. And then when we walk this way, we're just kind of mirroring it, these four. So we don't have to make like a whole separate, you know, another sprite sheet of four going this way. There's a there's a mirror. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. Alright. 
So let's go ahead and start the first lesson. <clears throat> All right, introduction to sprite sheets. So, of course, we're going to load the whole sprite sheet below into the preload. So, how we're going to do that. So, we're going to load, then create the sprite object, and then create the animation by selecting specific frames from the sprite sheet, and then play it. <coughs> so, simple enough. So, the class. So this is our scene right here. <clears throat> Just focusing on this scene. It's a preload. Okay. So instead of the this.load.image, I'm actually gonna go ahead and probably turn this down. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> That's better. All right. So to do this, we're going to do the this dot load like we always do. But instead, like I said, instead of an image or audio, <clears throat> we are going to put forth a sprite sheet. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's do well first. <clears throat> the sprite sheet and then you have the name right here of what it's going to be the location like what uh, what the file name is <clears throat> and then you have the frame width and then the frame height so it's a hundred by a hundred okay <clears throat> and those are within curly brackets so let's go ahead and do this. Start with the this dot load dot sprite sheet. All right, first argument. So we know it's going to be Cody. <clears throat> and then I believe it'll be the. Oh, we're going to get the sprite sheet from here as the second argument. <clears throat> All right, then we got the frame width, which will be 72. Okay. And then frame height will be set to 90. <coughs> All right, so we have it loaded now. Now the next part, we'll have to create. Oh, we won't see anything until the next exercise. We're off to a great start. Okay, so we'll run that. So there we go, we added the sprite sheet. And as you can see, we got the image for the cave, for the background, and then we have the image for the platform right here. And I assume there is a physics.add static group <coughs> for the platforms, yep. <coughs> and then we're adding the cave image and setting it to the origin. Zero, zero. And then we have the platform positions. Ah, okay. So it's adding all of these, the X and Y coordinates for each one of these. And then it's getting the platform positions, which is the array right here for each one of these values in here. So they're all separated by a comma, so this would be the first, this would be second, the third, the fourth, and then the fifth. So there's five. But you also have your sub. 
subs inside here. So the first value will be the x for here, y here, x here, y here, etc. So you have the platform positions, and then dot for each uh, for each one of these. Uh, okay, we're gonna create. This is gonna be the argument, and then the pointer arrow. So this is for a function. So the pointer arrow function. So platforms that create. So we're gonna create one based off of each one of these. So platforms that create for plat X, plat Y, using the platform up here. And then it's gonna put it in those positions that were specific. So we have here, one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. <coughs> nice. And then for our scenes, obviously we have the game scene right here. That makes it work. So let's go to the next stage, or the next lesson. Okay, so now we have a little bit more to do. So now we're going to create the animation for the sprite sheet. So looking in here, with so the logic is gonna go into our create method, which is right here. So that's going to go into here, right there, All right, and then so for the example right here, we have the game state dot the example sprite. So this is pretty much you know we're going to store it in uh, in here. So we're going to add the sprite, which would be the which would be Cody. Game state, add this, this stuff physics dot add sprite, x, y coordinate, and then we have what we're adding. So now we have a new one that is a this dot anims dot create to create our animations. So we have this right here that adds the sprite, but this dot anims create now will make the whole uh, animation here and this it may seem like a lot but breaking it down you know it should be a lot easier so we have the create uh, um, obviously create function for here for here and then we have this uh, so for this dot ams that create we have the key which we're calling movement, and then for frames, this dot ams dot generate frame numbers. So we use the sprite key, okay, and then we start at zero. So the first one. So out of all the sprites, we start with the first, and then end at five. So zero is the starting point. So instead of going one two three four five, it actually goes zero one two three four five. So it always starts at zero. And y this can start like wherever you want on the sprite sheet, but just remember that ev when you first start at the very beginning, it's always gonna be zero. Then you have your frame rate going 10, like you know, the frame rate speed would be 10. And then it looks like the repeat will be false based on this. So, so breaking it down, the key is how this would be referenced. The frames, which frame of the sprite sheet we're going to be using. So this dot anims generate frame numbers. We are using the, the sprite uh, sprite key in this example. So this is basically getting the sprite sheet. Then we're starting at the first frame, which is zero, and ending on the fifth, and that re it returns an array of sprite sheet frames and start up to and including end. Yep. <clears throat> and then you have the frame rate, how many frames per second it will default to 24 if you know the frame rate is not provided. 
uh, repeat how many times the animation repeats. Use uh, the minus one to continuously repeat the image. Okay, so it's gonna continuously run through. Okay. <clears throat> so usually, if you put a, if it's a minus one or kind of a zero, like, like if you do a return, um, it'll be like a zero. So to see what other properties we can include, check out uh, Rex Rainbow's phaser animation documentation. <clears throat> All right. So anyone who decides to do this right here, we have Rex Rainbow's phaser documentation, which I can just put that up here. And I will grab this and put it in the, um, well, actually, let's see what I can do here. Well, <clears throat> I can post it in the link down here. So anyone that wants to go ahead and use that documentation can. I'll send it also into, when this goes on YouTube, I'll put it in the description. <clears throat> so there's a lot of different callbacks and a lot of different stuff you can you can do. So this this documentation not only goes for here, but it's for the whole entire you know Phaser Three system. So I'll put that like I said in later. So all right. So in the create method. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and make our uh, make our player. So game state dot player. All right, player. All right, equal to <laughs> this dot physics dot add dot sprite. Okay, at two fifty five five hundred. And we're going to use Cody, which is the sprite sheet that we put up here. All right, so that's done. Uh, still inside the create, call uh, call this. So we're gonna create our animations now. So To call this time is a create and pass in the following object. So, okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and add this. So this dot anims dot create. Put this in here. Curly brackets. So we're gonna reference this key as run from what we can see. Uh, so frames. Determine this so this dot anims dot generate frame numbers Cody. So we're going to use the Cody sprite sheet and we're going to start. It appears at zero and end at three. Okay. Okay. I don't like how that is. So we'll just go ahead and like and do what it's doing. There we go. So make the frame rate <clears throat> set to five and repeat it infinitely. Okay. So now we have the animation done. So now we have to figure out once how we call this. But for now, we got the player set up and we got the animation run for um, Cody. Start and end, frame rates repeating. Okay. Let's just go ahead and go to the next one. <coughs> so now we got to animate the sprite okay so we have all the previous code 
So starting in the update. So remember, in the update, that's what makes our uh, player move. So right here within the if gain state dot cursors dot right dot is down, and then it's saying the velocity at 350. So see how it's not working. Well, also the fact that you have to you know set the velocity to zero if you know if nothing is down like in an else statement so let's do an else let's set the game state dot player dot set velocity x to zero Okay, so that way it will actually stop. So we're going to do that. So, all right. <laughs> so we're going to do the game state, I believe the player, and then set the velocity to 100, which is what we already have right here. But we're now going to play the animation. So I believe, let's try doing this. So I'm going to take a guess and do the game state dot player oops player dot anims dot play and then we're going to use the run remember uh, up in the create for here we used run for the key so we're going to use that and we're going to make it true all right so now whenever we run to the right, it should make that animation from zero, here we go, zero, and then end at three. And it, it just keeps running that way indefinitely until, um, until we stop. Okay. So that seems to be the only thing. So let's go ahead and do a run. Look at that. <laughs> that's amazing that's that's great that's awesome <coughs> all right I gotta do it again my little guy moving <laughs> that's cool all right, so let's go to the next lesson. So we're on five. So now we can do the right. We can keep going to the right, but eventually we're gonna have to we're gonna have to flip this. So we're gonna have to flip this the other way when we ever uh, when we go left, not right. So. We're gonna have to go back into here, okay? So we have the right, and that's down, run true. Okay, so, and then when we go left, we have this true. And then when we have this, we have idle. Okay, so they must have added another, yeah, there we go. See an idle animation. So it only goes four and five and it just keeps doing four and five the whole time. Okay. Now we need to figure out. So when we go right, we flick, uh, we f set the flip X. So flip X is what we're gonna use to actually flip the sprite. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So that's all we're changing is we're getting the game state for the player. And then we're gonna do a flip X and set this to, so if we're going to the right, we're not gonna, we're gonna set this to false. But when we come in here, we need to do game state dot player dot flip x and we gotta make this true because we need to flick 
we gotta flip the uh, we gotta flip it on its x-axis. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do this. Let's run that. Okay, so we're running. Well, now I want to go left. There we go. See, now the animation is now flipped. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. <laughs> Alright. So flip X. Uh, I'll call you to turn back to the right when need be. Yep. I believe we already did that. Yep. So we're good. Now we can go right and left. So just remember, we have to add our animation at the beginning for loading the sprite sheet. Then we have to create our animation, which would be right, right here. And of course they set the scale at 0.8 because we need it smaller to be able to, you know, um, match the rest of the, uh, the other sprites. So setting that scale, physics.add collider, uh, the player and the platform, so we have that one, and we have the set collider world bounds to true, so we can't get out of here. So let's go ahead and... All right. Yeah, so anyway, you have the colliders. And then right here you have the animation that we created. So as you know, we did the this.anims.create. So creating an animation right here where we can run. Then we have an idle. And then we have our key, um, the, the run key, idle key, that's what I meant for frames. This.animation generate frame numbers. So we tell what we want to call when we're doing this. Start, end, all right. So the thing is, so now you're starting to kind of get these. Uh, you're starting to kind of understand this. Now, whenever we start adding enemies, we can actually make timers so whenever they go to the right, uh, they can, you know, at a certain time, they can go to the left and at a certain time, you know, and keep doing that in the loop. You could also add little tiny invisible blocks. Um, I know in other games, uh, there have been that to where if it collides with this, like an adding an if statement, like if this collides with this, then, you know, you'll have to flip the X axis and then it'll go the other way and start moving, you know, the opposite direction. So that's how you can do those. Um, you know, making enemies go back and forth. So that's a good, th good thing to know, because I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure it should, you know, animate. It should uh, go through that at some point. All right. So pausing the animations. <coughs> so. We call so the example sprite. So this would be like the game state dot player dot ams dot pause on the sprite to put a pause on its animation. We can also call this dot anims dot pause all to pause all the animations in the scene. So like, let's say you get hit and you need to restart the game over. Usually, it puts puts the game over sign on on the uh, oh well, as an overlay over the scene and then nothing moves anymore until you click and then it restarts the the scene over again so let's go ahead and see what happens all right so we've included the animated snowman in the middle of the main platform we've also added an overlapped object that checks when cody comes in contact with the snowman it works very similarly to a choir object except it allows the sprites to overlap so let's kind of look and see where that is. So there's the plat positions, adding the sprite, platforms, that collider bounds, cursors. 
So we're adding the sprite, adding the collider. So the enemy with the platforms to making sure that stays on. Um, snowman alert. Play snowman animation. Yep. And then here's the overlap optics. So this stuff physics add overlap, game state player, game state enemy. And then when they overlap, this is what's going to happen. <clears throat> So when I overlap it, and when I, instead of like hitting right here, if I actually go into it, then it, uh, I believe, that's when it's called. See what happens. So we're gonna, when this overlaps this and hits that, we're gonna do the this dot anims dot, oh, not this. So when that happens, Ah, so we gotta pause the snowman. So game state dot enemy dot anims dot pause. Okay, so it is pausing this anime, enemy, <laughs> anime, the enemy here. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. Okay, so when I hit this, ah, see. <laughs> so I'm not colliding anymore but when I hit it it acts like an actual collider so I can go behind it do what I want with it <coughs> okay so it's pausing that pause one snowman animation but let's see what happens when we pause all the animation inside the same callback function of the previous step call so dot anim so instead of declaring the enemy to pause we're gonna do all animations pause all so let's run this Was still animating. So how? So let's comment this out and see what pause all does when I do this. So it's saying if the player overlaps this, then. still pauses it oh wait a minute hold on ah look at our guy right here so it's doing this but when I hit see the uh, the idle animation is done too so it just pauses the whole thing Okay, so the overlap, okay. That's a nifty tool. Okay. So tweens, while animations allow us to play through the frames of a sprite sheet, tweens help refine the transition from frame to frame by creating in-between frames. Sprites undergoing changes like their size and positions appear smoother. Okay. So instead of going straight from one to the next, it's gonna make an actual smooth transition over. Okay. So move tween, this dot tween. So the target is the game state, and this would be the player. 
one common use of tweens to convey movement. So 300 is linear, duration 300. So let's go over each part of this in here. So we call the this.tweens add to create a tween, save to game state move tween, the object that we provide as an argument. So the target determines which sprites are affected. And you can also use an array, so you can have more than one target. All right, so x determines the final x coordinate of games. Okay. So of the player sprite. So. Okay. Ease describes how how the tween plays linear we provide a value of linear which means it plays at constant speed but if we want some variation we could have provided another easing function so looking at the easing functions so bounce in so we have a bounce okay Sub ball to positive infinity. Okay. Ah, so this is bounce. We have linear. Continuously moves. Quadratic, cubic. Okay, so this slowly goes down. Many different ways to ease. Okay, so right now we're going to use linear, and then the duration is 3000, I believe that is in milliseconds. Yep, duration determines how long the tween lasts, so 3000 milliseconds. Repeat as many times the tween runs. Yo-yo is a true or false statement. If it's true, the tween plays in reverse for the sprite to return back to its original state. Size, position, angle, etc. before the tween started. If it's false, then the sprite remain as it is after the tween finishes. To play the tween, we call dot .play. On game state dot move tween. I believe that was at the bottom here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this, let's see what it does. So let's go ahead and so when we exit here, there's going to be a oh. they had a bounce function. So when it hits this, and you reach the exit, click to play again. Ah, so it e what? Does it ease into here or Okay. I do kind of want to see that. Hmm. Uh 
another step. Okay. So the enemy sprite. So here we go. So when the en the player overlaps the enemy, it's game over. And pause, activate. Uh, mouse is detected. Okay. Step one. Code below, so that's the pointer up, so it restarts. Okay. Let's try this. So the move. Snowman alert. <coughs> so game state enemy dot. Okay, so let, let's just try this. So game state dot enemy dot move. So we're going to create this. Right, this dot. Between and ooh, okay. So we'll go ahead and do this. All right, so tar targets, and we want it to be the game state oh. state dot player. Moves the sprite to the coordinate 320. So. Is that what it was? Just X? Yeah, I guess so. So 320. Okay. Have an ease of linear. If it's case sensitive. I just realized I closed that documentation that we had just a little bit ago. Uh, I'll get that back here in a little bit. Actually, here we go. Just add here for the notes. All right, here. I'll save that. Okay, so we have an ease. Now, now it's gonna last for three thousand milliseconds, and then repeat. Set that to negative one to continuously repeat. And then yo yo, oh. yo yo will be back and forth. That's how'd they do that? So, so true. Okay, duh. <laughs> oh boy. Goes back and forth. Ah, okay. Well, uh, what did we do wrong? Does it show we did one? 
game state enemy move a value of this dot tweens dot add okay so this right here takes care of the enemy oh <laughs> we don't want the player to do it we want the enemy There we go. Oh. Well, I think that's that's good. Targets game state dot enemy. Okay, so instead of doing all those conditions, like if this adds this collider, this collides with this or anything like that. Or a timer. This is the timer I was talking about. It would be a tween. So it automatically does it by itself. And. Continuously goes. One. So if I, do I just put it here then? See what that does? I thought I did this correct. Ah, because this is in an overlap when this hits that, so. So when it stops, we want to do, like when it pauses all, we want to just pause the enemy movement. So we'll do the game state dot enemy oop, dot move and then dot stop. I do this so that stops the animations everything but this isn't actually stopping so why this in here right now for step two well first we need to figure out I guess why this is not doing what it's supposed to so let's see how this moves now add targets So this is the win condition. So 
So wait, okay, so if I do this and I don't get hit. No. Game over, play again. So does it stop as well? Okay. Oh, there you go. See, it stops. But does it also stop when... Yeah, see the overlap right here to stop. Yeah. So this appears right. And I'm not sure why that is um, wrong. So. an ease of linear oh there we go because the duration is wrong it's 1800 milliseconds so it's a little faster so that makes it a little more difficult So tweens is animating it on its own. Yep, there we go. Awesome. And then I assume when you click, like when you do these certain things, you can click and then it goes to another, uh, another scene. With all the same movements, but it makes it harder and you have to try and get through. Okay. So this dot tweens dot add tween callbacks. Something happened after tween finished playing or while it's looping. How about before it starts playing? Conveniently, phaser allows us to provide the tween callback functions. Okay. So on start, if we want a function to execute when the tween starts, on yo yo, when the tween starts going back to the original position, on repeat, if we want function to execute each time the tween plays or on complete if one function to execute when the tween finishes. If we want to remove our sprite after its tween finished playing, we would call on complete. Okay, so there's a function right here. So they're adding now a function which, I mean, I would I think this would be a yeah it's a function because you have methods right here but this is not really an object so it's just cleaner code this could all be on like the same line but we're doing this on separate lines to make this cleaner so okay yeah that makes sense so game uh, take the sprite and then you can destroy it on when it's complete Game state, uh, move tween dot play. Okay. So what, what does it want us to do? New function, grow snowman. So inside of create, we want to execute this function every time the tween repeats. Okay, so it'd be like on yo-yo, right? Or on repeat, oh, no? Each time the tween plays, so on repeat. Add a key of on repeat. Now the tween repeats. Inside the argument passed into this. The tween's that add. Okay. So I'm sure it's gonna be here. So this the tween's that add. We want to so I believe on repeat. So function. And then we want it to
Okay. So we don't have to have our own function. We can actually just put a grow snowman. Do we have to have it as a... Do we have to actually put the parentheses to indicate that it's a... Method? Okay, I guess not. Oh, it just gets bigger. Every time we don't do anything, okay. Okay. Alright. Well, give me one second. Let me use the restroom real quick. And then we'll continue on to the next one. Alright, give me one minute. So we can look at this, and this is the gross snowman function that was created. So if the scale change, so what? Okay, so scale change is 1.1. 1, 1. 1. So it's less than 4, it's going to keep doing this until it hits 4. And it's going to add 0.3 continuously until it reaches this number. And then saying the game state enemy dot set scale and altering that to the scale change. So it's updating this value. And then the game state dot enemy dot y is Subtracting the Y value by 15 each time. <coughs> hmm. Is that to keep the center mass or the center in check? Probably. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next scene. All right, and we did it. Learned about the difference between the image and the sprite sheet, loading in the sprite sheets, creating animations, playing animations, flipping animations, pausing, using creating tweens, and adding a callback to a tween. So you can also do these, create a jump animation for Cody, add more tween callbacks, making use of on start. So provide the game state dot exit with a tween create another level scene with new animations in tweens 
So yeah, we could do that. Creating a jump animation. So I did want to find out that jump animation. How how that was even how that was made. Oh, I didn't have to even go back. I can just look on here. So first off, let's look at the sprite sheet here. Let's pull this sprite sheet open and look what we're looking at. Okay. So when it's jumping, we could just set this here. For here. And then while it's up in the air, do this and then come back down right here. So is there, there is no animation for this, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I need to find where this jump is. Hmm. Well, I guess while I'm doing this, I could make another one. Uh, we'll create this dot uh, anims dot create create another one. Oh wait, no. Nope. All right, so we will name this the key. We will name it jump. All right. Then frames. So this dot anims dot generate frame numbers and then make it Cody um, and we want this to start at zero and I believe it's two is when we want to end so we can do uh, start at zero and then end at uh, two. So now we have this. Oops, oops, oops. So we have frames. Now we want the frame rate. Now, we can do this animation. Like we could, all we'd have to do honestly is just start it at you know, uh, we only have to use technically this one in the middle. We can just use one and then end it with one. So, I mean, we could, but I kind of want to animate it a little bit because what's the fun if, you know, going through this whole thing and not being able to. So let's do, what would a two look like? And we don't want it to repeat. So, uh, so if we're repeating, so zero times, okay, so we'll do that. And then, so good, we have this now done. So now we need to add it. whenever it's jumping. So the player.ams.play and the true, we need to add that whenever it's jumping. Where are you?
seems to stay as active. So what is that? Is that already a pre? Game state okay. Oh, okay, the game state's set active to true. So you can set it to false and then, you know, that could just indicate the game is... Jump! Wait a minute. It already had it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did it already have a j It didn't. They just added that. Oh. There we go. We set the velocity Y to minus 800. And then it comes down. So let's go ahead. If it already had the anims. Jump. I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't want to. What if I do that? Frame rate five hundred. Wait a minute. Can I do that? Just send definitely just to make sure that it's actually doing something. So it's really okay. say cursor space is down or the cursor stop up is down oh wait hold on so up is down or space okay and the game state player body is touching Game state player animations play jump true. Oh, my bad. Okay. Ah. Uh. Okay. So they know it's here. So, I guess it wouldn't even matter. Just start it at two, end at two. No. One. 
end that one. We can do that, so run that. So it does indicate that when I do it, it just... see it kind of more clearly now but <laughs> I think it'll just keep playing it. So, we'll say if this is equal to false, or we can say if it's not equal to true, we'll go ahead and do this. So this is not equal. Okay, so. What else do we change? So if it's not true, we'll go ahead and do this. 
There we go. There we go. And we'll take this out of here. Because all we want to do is on here. So now, when it jumps... Now it's only playing one animation. But now that we have this jump working with the animation... Got it. Okay. So. Where's that jump animation? Right here. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and start this at zero and end with two. And then we won't repeat it, but I want it to be. Uh, that might be. Ah, that's going wait. Can I do it like that? Yeah, I don't know how to point one of a frame rate because I want to do that, but what if we just go ahead and repeat it? So, alright, so instead of doing all this, you know, we can just have a frame rate of zero, repeated of zero, because we're not really doing anything other than saying it to two. So instead of one, we'll do two. I kind of like that a little bit better. Ah, so was that it was at one or zero? Okay, so now I I thought that was the end. So it starts at one and ends at two. Okay, so we'll run this. So would this be a smooth trend? No. Hmm, frame rate. Thousand frames? It's not, it's not repeating. It's not. Oh, wait. I said that to. Oh. Well, that's. Can I do that? That's. Maybe it was just too fast. So could I do... So... No, that ain't gonna work. I can't make a tween for that. Alright, so we're not gonna make it repeat. We'll just go ahead and keep it at this. So we'll just do starts at zero, ends at zero. It's just gonna keep its jump animation. Or we can just have it at one. So whichever one, you know, 
define better. There you go. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. Cool. Well, we animated it. We got it working. All right, and we got to add down here. So we have the animation play when it's doing that. Okay. We have officially made the game. We have added animation so let's see what is actually next so they have a quiz over this and then they have a project uh, Cody's counting conundrum which there'll be another project for the pro version so we'll go ahead and skip because I'm not definitely paying for that at least you know if you want to that's fine so now we have a cool little thing here and we're already at an hour and a half hmm. we could probably finish off this one Still have about half an hour left, so we'll see how far we can get through here. We'll be doing uh, cameras. Hmm. So in order to grant the joy of exploration and discovery, it becomes important for the game world to be larger than what the player immediately sees upon entering the game. Right. A useful way to convince the player of your game of this is by employing the use of cameras. So a camera is a view of the game world. Some games, those with mini maps for instance, employ multiple cameras, but we will be focusing on just using one. Okay. So Phaser creates a camera by default, which we have been using without any customization. Its bounds are set to be the same as the dimensions for your game given in config. Okay. It also does not move at all, but we will change both of those things for our platformer. So we can add the sprite right here. Then we have this dot cameras dot aim. And then you set the bounds of that camera. And then so Okay. Give a bounds larger than the config width. Height. We do this by calling set bounds and giving bounds larger than our config width and height. We also tell the camera to follow along our main player by calling to start follow, passing it the sprite we want to follow. Okay. But we also have a start. They have arguments within the start follow, so you have your target, but not only that, uh, round pixels. Or X, or Y, offset X, and offset Y. So going into detail, uh, round pixels is a boolean that affects rendering. Set to true if you're experiencing camera jitter. Okay, so warp X and warp Y are the speed between 0 and 1, but it defaults to 1 with which the camera locks onto the target. So a lower alert speed will have the effect that your character is moving much faster than the camera. Okay.
offset X and offset Y. So offsetting X is something like minus 200. We'll keep Cody on the left side of the screen, so more of the level ahead is on the screen. Okay. So we've created a snowy background for Cody to run through. Let's set up a camera to run through it with them. So inside levels create function. After the call to create animations. So where is the, ah. So now this is in its own method for all the animations to keep this in order. So having them all in their own spaces. Game state, the speed is set at 240. What height? Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and add these cameras. So we're gonna do the this dot camera dot. So oh, doing the main camera, setting the bounds. Okay. So zero, zero. It seems like this is. The default, because we saw in this one it was zero zero as well. Hmm. Okay. So game state width. Oh, this dot camera, not cameras. Or cameras, not camera. Okay. Okay. So we'll run that. Yay. We have the camera set for here. For the game state dot width. So, in the configuration, it's set to 500, 600, with the width of 500 and the height of 600. But we are actually putting the game state as you sit, see right. Where are you? Game state. It'll be width of 2000 and the height of 600. Okay. Huh. So it's giving us more right here then? Hold on. I gotta see. We gotta see what happens after. Now set the boundary of the world to be the same as the boundary of the camera by calling. So where does it want to put that? put that as just underneath it all right uh, so this dot physics dot world dot set bounds We want the same argument. 
Okay, so... Okay. Now follow Cody around by calling. So... Ah, okay. So the bounds are actually bigger now. So let's go ahead with the follow. Because we don't, you know, want him to leave. We'll just go ahead and dot this dot cameras dot main dot start follow. Okay. And then we want obviously the player. And then so true to keep away the camera jitter. So that would be uh, this for the round pixels. Lorp X, Lorp Y. So don't. Okay, so point. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the X and 0 0.5 is the Y so it's not going to exactly target him but it's going to give a little bit of a it'll follow fairly quickly okay so let's go ahead and do it so it's not going to exactly follow is this huh background one background two and background three so we have zero background three <laughs> so does it just keep wait a minute so it just keeps repeating the background for however big it is it doesn't or is this background just naturally bigger I think it is. So it sets the screen for 500 and 600 here, but Is this for the camera? Width high is 600. So the width is 2000 instead of 600. just by, you know, the game states. How far the game state, like how big it's going to be. Just dot cameras, main, start, follow, and it follows the player. But you also have this 
world set bounds so he doesn't go off the screen. And making it the same. Alright. So, I think we should leave this off here. And then continue where we left off with cameras in the next session. So... Um, yeah, we're uh, about 20 minutes early, but I think we'll be okay. That was uh, not really a too big of a of a uh, of a lesson right there. But like I said, I'll go ahead and I'll post that uh, doc. Um, not here. Um, right here. So we'll go ahead and post this doc. So you have animations right here on how to do this. Um, but also, if you look over here, you have tons of other stuff that we can do. And if you need to find anything, you can actually can just type animations if you just forget see animations pause all resume all animations playing an animation so and stop well this is the scene but you can just do like you know your, your object animation.play and then give it the uh, what's called so there you go you have animation here so alright I appreciate you guys all sticking with me and I think that'll be the end of this session so I look forward to working with you guys in the next with cameras I know we kinda got a little taste of it here but there seems to be 11 uh, if it was shorter then I'd probably go but you know it's almost 11 here and with work and stuff I gotta, gotta keep that schedule so alright you guys have a good night